I'm not sure if you really want to do this, and also I am not sure if this will really work, but here are nine ways that you can supposedly call a ghost. There's no guarantees, however, that this will work. But number one, you could use a Ouija board to converse with a spirit. Now, the modern version of the Ouija can consists of a board with all 26 letters of the alphabet and the numbers 0 to 9 are printed on it. Also often you'll see the words yes and no on the Ouija board and also the word goodbye. Now a lot of times you'll get like a plastic heart or something like that and that's the item that people put their fingers on in order to have a spirit supposedly guide it and uh, answer your questions. So you ask yes or no questions and then the Ouija board tells you answers based on what the spirit is supposedly telling you. Number two is using a pentagram to conjure demons. Now things generally work if you believe in them and that is kind of the case. We are powerful as human beings and whatever we believe in we can tend to create and so there are rituals in which people use a pentagram to symbolize different elements of nature and they form a circle nine feet across. Now one is made for the person summoning and another basically is a summon to bind the spirit. Basically you make the star and circle which is part of a larger ceremony and usually this whole process can summon supposedly unpredictable demons. You can try this at your own risk if you think that this may work for you. Number three is using a crystal ball. I kind of like this idea. It's kind of a fun concept. And using a crystal ball, a human medium is supposed to be able to see a spirit or hear its voice and then pass those words along to the person evoking the spirit. Usually the person who is looking into the crystal ball speaks for the spirit. Now in other cases the spirit might actually be housed in some kind of symbolic image or conjure into a diagram so that it can't actually escape without the magician's permission. But that's the concept of the crystal ball. Some people believe you can use mirrors to summon a witch and what you'd want to do is actually start off in a well-lighted room. You light a few candles, turn off the lights, and once there's enough wax you actually splash the mirror with wax. You sprinkle salt around the mirror and yourself. You set up candles around you and you be very quiet. And then once the wall is dry you're supposed to take a knife and carve into the wax the type of spirit you want to summon. And then you take a knife, and actually, this is kind of crazy, but you put some of your own blood on the mirror. Now you chant, which is course through time, we are in need of assistance. Oh, spirit, come, we beckon you, share your stories, come until the morning light. Now, personally, I would recommend leaving out the blood part of this sort of thing, but it's up to you what you decide to do. Just we're not advising any of that in this case. Some people believe you can speak to the dead through candlelight. So basically you light a white candle and focus on the idea of the person you want to speak to. You can grab two small pieces of paper and write yes on one and no on the other. And underneath the words, people recommend sketching a pentagram. And then you place the papers literally as close as you can fit right next to the candle. You can add salt to the melted candle wax to bind the spirit to the candle and then you ask if a spirit is with you right now. You can follow the flame and if it leans to the yes you know something's around then you can continue asking yes or no questions and you follow the signs to know you are speaking with a spirit such as an odd candle position, a rippling in the candle or maybe a downward thrust. You want to be in an area where there's no gusts of wind so that you don't have potential complications or or beliefs that there's actually movement in the air when there's actually not but you want to snuff the candle out afterward and that is a possibility as well there are also ways to summon good luck ghosts in real life so you can close your eyes and forget your worries and you focus on this idea of a four-leaf clover or good luck and you simply chant the following spirit earth air water and fire come to me and give me what I desire Waves of luck fall down on me and complete my wishes effortlessly. May this spell take toll for one whole day, and after midnight strikes, may it go away. As I will, so mote it be. 
and this idea is that this spell will conjure a gift of a ghost in your life that actually gives you good luck something like the Harry Potter good luck charm that gives him extra special good luck for a day some people like to summon storms and I actually am of the belief that you can have some influence over the weather by creating a certain environments in which that can happen in this case would take a pan uh, with a half liter of water and place it on the stove let the water set until boiling and then you chant water boil water cling to the dust as I sing not just here but everywhere just like this at which I stare now you're supposed to say this three times and each time you release some dust and you might not say this quickly or too slowly, but you look outside and see if a storm comes. Sometimes people actually believe they can create influence over storms, and I believe there's probably some truth to that in our own emotional states that we can create storms around us. Whether those be physical or metaphysical is up to you to decide. Some people, instead of summoning ghosts, like to summon angels. And one concept around summoning angels would be to light a candle. And some people say you have to do it at midnight. I think whatever you believe is true tends to be true. But you light a white candle at midnight and say, Oh, heavenly creatures of the light, I call to you. Come to this place now. So might it be. And then you can cue the harp music and heavenly bells. And unless they're the kind of angels that come from Constantine, you should be seeing really nice, good angels around you. And I believe you can actually call on extra help in life. And if you believe in angels, this can be an extra good help for you as well. In addition to or instead of fair, uh, angels, sometimes people like to call on fairies. And if you want to call fairies to your lawn or to your backyard, you can choose a patch of bare earth. You lay out a couple of circle of fairy footprints by cutting tiny footprint shapes into a piece of paper. And then you just lay the paper on the ground. You can sprinkle it with some sugar or some powdered milk. And then you basically move the paper along and keep repeating until you have a full circle. You just put a few pl flower petals in the center of those footprints and chant, Little folk of flashing wing, little folk of dancing feet, hear my words to you and bring blessings with you when we meet. And this is to bring fairies to your garden. So whether you choose to use a Ouija board or a pentagram or a crystal ball, I hope that this has given you a few ways to call ghosts into your life in real life. And hopefully they bring you the kind of good fortune and success that you are looking for and not just chills and thrills. But if you're looking for chills and thrills, I hope that's what you encounter as well and that you have the kind of good success that you want in life regardless of how you are going about getting it hopefully you are treating others kindly and treating them well and i wish you the very best of success if you liked this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up below be sure to subscribe as we have more helpful videos almost every single day. If you have any questions that we can answer for you, please be sure to come and visit us at showmehowtodothis.com.